recording. So we talk about we talked about arrays over and over. Okay, we talk about arrays over and over. We want to understand what arrays are, okay? So this is essentially what an array is when you are writing integer A5. This is what happens in your program. Your executable is the, anybody problem with colors? No? Okay. So not that you don't like the colors or not. Can you see colors? That's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. So the green area is actually your executable, your main, the program that is on the hard drive, and then it gets loaded to operating system and runs. When you write integer A5, you actually have your entire array inside your executable. So if you write integer A5000 and you look at the size of your executable, it grows. And when your program runs, it brings your program into the memory. And as soon as it comes into memory, because the whole program comes to memory, your array comes to life, live, and you can actually work with it. Okay? Um, and if you get out of the limit of your program, if you actually go to A5 is equal to 2, which means you're actually setting, the, you're actually setting this one, if by mistake you actually say A5 is equal to yours, you're going one out of the thing. You're actually ruining your own executable, and your program's going to crash, okay? In these cases, programs crash, okay? But when we are doing dynamic memory allocation, the story is a bit different. In dynamic memory allocation, when you actually say integer pointer A is equal to new int 5, the only thing that is in your executable is your pointer. The actual array is outside of your executable somewhere in the shared memory between all applications that we call it heap. Okay? So it's actually in there. It's not in your executable anymore. So if you make the size of this thing 5,000, your executable remains the same. The size of the executable won't change because the... Uh, what you may call it, the memory is actually allocated outside of your uh, program. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. Now, dynamic memory allocation. We need to first, I'm going to just go through it first for you to have an idea, and then we're going to code. We're going to actually write a string. You know that C++ has an object called string, like C out. Okay, we want to write that ourselves. We want to write the string object ourselves, and instead of being std scope resolution string, it's going to be sdds scope resolution string. It's our string. And the string of C++ starts with lowercase, all is going to be uppercase. But who cares? We'll just want to, we want to do all the dirty stuff that strings suck at in C. We want to bring it behind the scene under the hood of our object so all those things happen over here so I don't have any more null termination con this consideration and things like that. Everything happens automatically for me. So before that, we want to understand how dynamic memory allocation actually work. And to do that, we have to see what happens when we do something wrong in our program. Like what is bad when we are dealing with pointers? So initially, like the most common thing that you guys do, you guys, I mean programmers, us, we do and we make a mistake, is that we create a pointer. I'll call it mdata over there. And we create it and we forgot, we we'll forget to actually set any dynamic memory to it. Then we start pointing to it and, and put some value in it, saying m data 5 is equal to value, or target of m data is equal to value. And because, as you see, I'm pointing pointer, pointer is just an integer, right? When I say it type pointer m data, that type pointer is a type, like int, like double, but this is an integer pointer, a time po type pointer. The value in there is garbage, therefore a garbage address, therefore pointing to some place that no one knows what's there. And when you actually say m data 5 is set to something or target of data is set to something, you are literally going somewhere outside of your territory of your memory and try to write something. That's when actually you see the segmentation fault. Segmentation fault, it means you're out of your segment. You're trying to write out of your, your memory. So 
That is why we always like to set our pointer to a null pointer. To, to, so as soon as you create a pointer, it's kind of obsession. You have to set it to null, which means it points nowhere. Okay? Of course, if you set this one, you're going to get a null pointer assignment message, which is cool, which means I did something wrong. Okay? Um, and also, it's a good idea to always keep track of what is the size of the memory that I'm allocating so later on I can check if I need more, I can resize it on the run. Okay? So always we have to set the data to null. Okay? And always keep track of what the size of the target of our memory is. And that's one of the most important things. So next thing that happens is when I create actually memory, I have a specific size. When I'm within my size over here, as you see, life is beautiful. I, am, I allocated some, something, and I'm within my size, and I'm putting something in there. Everything's good. But if you actually go even one unit out of your memory size, so when you say size is 7, and then you say m data 7 is x because it's 0, it starts from 0, then you're actually going one outside. Again, you're outside, then you're going to segmentation fall. That's another thing that you have to be extremely careful about. All right? Another thing. That is a so down to here. We do, do we understand? We understand what memory allocation is. So all these, as you see, we all have a little pointer. That little pointer points to a piece of memory, and that piece of memory is our domain of uh, of process. Things that we're going to do, we're going to do it in that those parts. We are okay with that, right? Next thing that can go wrong is memory leak. Now, what is memory leak? Memory leak is essentially memory leak. Essentially, is when you have a piece of memory being pointed, the blue one, with a pointer, and you reuse that pointer to allocate some memory in there. So what happens is that when M data is either, either pointing to the blue part, correct? Now I'm saying M data is equal to new type, new size. I want to resize the memory. I want to make it bigger. Without deleting the old one, what happens? The new operator that you see over here, this new operator, okay, this new operator will allocate memory, the brown part, or orange, whatever you call it, and puts the address in M data. So the old data that was pointing to the blue part will be overwritten and lost forever. There is no way to get it back. You lost the number, you lost the address. You don't know where you can go to free that memory anymore. And therefore, you're going to have memory leak. This is when you call Bell or Rogers and say, my modem doesn't work. They say, take it off power, can't wait for 15 seconds, and plug it back in. Why? They want to reset it so all the memory leaks get wiped out and you get your memory back. Because the memories never go away. Your program has memory leak. You, you keep using connections, and Wi Fi's get connected, disconnected, disconnected. And every single time, a little bit of memory leak is happening until the memory of your modem is full. And then, done. Or how do they do attacks to, like, they actually bring down a network. What do they do? They keep pinging it, and those pinging will use the memory, and the memory gets full, and then the, the thing crashes. So that's, that's, that's how it happens, okay? So memory leak is one of our biggest enemies, something that is silent, and we don't see it until it hits the fan. So at the beginning, your program works pretty cool. Everything's nice. But seven years later, they're going to tell you a program crashes after two years of working because all the memory is used now and there's nothing left. I have to keep rebooting, rebooting my computer and I hate it. Okay? So that's what happens. That's memory leak. So essentially, this is what happens. Are we okay with this? Any questions now to you? Are we good? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So I got a memory leak problem one time in my Visual Studio, and it crashed my whole code uh, instead of just sort of like going to the end. That's, Is that possible? That memory leaks doesn't usually don't crash the code unless you are working under an. Uh, I don't see that. Your memory leaks usually usually memory leaks don't crash code because it's just a piece of memory that you're not using is left out. Yeah, probably and something else, and you found that looking for that bug, you found your memory leak too. It's very possible. But memory leaks are, a, you know what memory leak is? Is a person is not tidy. 
You know, you keep putting, like, you eat and you don't wash your dishes. So first day is okay, second day is okay, third day, ah, you can pull the dishes around. And fifth day and eighth day, you don't have any space in your kitchen, then you're going to shoot, I have to reboot the kitchen. Okay, wash everything, right? And then start from scratch again to go on uh, be, being untidy. So that's what it is. Yes, sir. So for the first part, if we are reallocating the memory, we have to remove the previous one. Always. So, but the data on that one would be wiped of off. Of course. So you have to take care of that yourself. You have to make sure you get the data first. Oh. Anything you throw away, okay, if I'm cleaning up and I'm throwing some boxes away, I better look inside. I want to make some room, but I have to look inside. So if the thing is inside is garbage, then who cares? If it's not garbage, I have to take care of it, move it to the proper place, move it in a new box if I want to. So, so a correct state of unused pointer for dynamic memory allocation is always being null and the size being set to zero. You always keep memory null and you set your size to zero. And then you do your little dynamic memory allocation. And as soon as you do the dynamic memory allocation, you set the size to whatever you have and you make the pointer point to whatever you want to point. And as soon as you're done with your stuff, you delete it. You have to make sure that you delete the data. And however you are creating it, you are deleting, deleting it the exact same way. If you're uh, allocating only one thing, you delete one thing. If you're allocating an array, it has to be an array that is being deallocated. All right? And then after you do that, you always set it back to null. Do that obsessively. Okay? At our stage, do it even if it's not necessary. So you get you, so you understand why you do it, and then when you understand why you do it, then you can do it only when you need it. But for now, be obsessive about it, okay? Incorrect memory deallocation causes memory leak too, which means if I actually delete the array without the square bracket, it only deletes the first element because it thinks you only have one thing over there. And again, you have the rest of the array sitting in the memory. So that's another memory leak that you've got to be careful about. OK? And that becomes the memory leak that you have. Are we OK with this? When reusing memory, when reusing memory, always make sure that your, the me your memory is not actually being used. If this is your case. If the data is not a not, not pointer, it means you have something in it then take care of unfinished visit with allocated memory if needed. And then after you are done, you free the memory, then do the dynamic memory allocation after. So first you have to, first you have to make sure that everything's done, then you do the new size. Okay? And make sure you always stay within the range of your memory allocated memory, and you're good to go. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay too? I'll put the slides in the notes of today too, in case I don't know if it's if you like to have the slides. It's it's being recorded, so uh, we're going to have it both ways. So for now, let's before we continue with the rest of the stuff. I have uh, a few more slides. I have the memory resizing, bad copying. Copy. We, we have all those things, and we're going to go a little ahead of our uh, curriculum uh, thingy. Uh, Process with resources is for after study break. But, but we, we say, while the oven is hot, stick the bread. That's one of the things that we have in our background. Let's, let's say, like, as soon as you, do, you can, make sure you, you make things to go through. I, and I want you to, now that you are within the dynamic memory allocation topic, I want to cover these things, even if I don't show you how, so you actually know. So to follow what I was saying, if I want to create a string, and keep all the dirty work under the hood, what I need to do is to keep track of what my string is, right? So it's a good idea, uh, again, to do it exactly the same thing. So I'm going to have an integer for size, if I can type it again, integer for size. Oh, one thing, let me pause the recording and tell you something about uh, the, the workshop before we continue. All right, so. I need to know the size, and of course, I need, I'm dealing with character arrays, so I'm going to create a character pointer uh, data. And that's the data of my string, whatever I want to put in there, 
okay? Obviously, I want when they are actually creating a string, so if they want to actually create a string, so if they say string s, I want that string to be an empty string, right? I want that string to be an empty string. So what do I do? In here, I'm going to say uh, string. That's my new argument constructor, if you recall. And in here, I'm going to say string, string with the new argument constructor. And what I need to, so what can I do? Like what, like what is an empty string? You can simulate it yourself. It's your coding. You can either say, okay, I'm going to make an empty string and a safe empty state the same thing. So I'm going to set size to minus 1 and put that one null. Or say set size to 0 and put null PTR at m data to, to null. Or you can say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make this to be an actual C empty string, which means I'm going to create an array of one character and set it to null and put 0 over there. So I'm going to have the safe empty state and think two different things just for the heck of it and see what's, how it's going to come up. I'm going to go with the second one. So an empty string, I'm going to make it actually an empty string. So in here, I'm going to say m data is set to character. And I'm going to put on purpose over here one, new character one, only one. And I'm going to set that one. to null, to zero. And I'm going to make the size to zero. All right? Immediately after doing this, go after your destructor. Clean up after you're done. I want to make sure I don't have any memory leaks, so that's the very first thing you do. So as soon as I've done this, I'm going to write the destructor for it. So I'm going to say string and in here, I'm going to write string, the destructor. And all I need to do is what? Delete. Do I need to check to see if it's, uh, do I need to check to see if it's null or not before I delete it? No, delete does that. If it's null, delete won't do anything. OK? In old times, I didn't know if it actually does it or not, so I was kind of worried. I would say, if it's not null, delete it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have deleted. But delete does that anyway, so I don't mind. Now, this is the part that I would say, if you're a pro, you wouldn't make anything null in here, or you didn't set the size to 0 if you're a pro. Because you know the structure is at the moment of object's death. Who cares if the pointer is null when I'm throwing it in garbage, right? But I would be happy to see you actually set the pointer to null here too, although it's absolutely unnecessary and flags you as the rookie, OK? But again, if you understand why we are not putting null over here, then don't. Because we know the structure is getting called right before object's death, right? I'm throwing it to garbage. All I need to do is to take care of the stuff that it has, its belongings. That's the delete. No, that, that being null or not, why do I care? I don't care, right? So what is the next thing I want to do? Make the string actually being able to set, be set to another string, to another, sorry. Uh, to, a, to a character pointer, so I can actually set a string to something. For that, I need to have a string that accepts a constant character pointer. That's, and I'm going to call it C string, because it's, it is actually a C string, right? C string. All right? Or even be more descriptive about it, C string, I'm going to call it. So it's a C string, not a regular string. And I'm going to write that constructor over here. So essentially what I'm going to say over here will be a string. And in here, const character pointer str. In here, I don't need to be that descriptive. I don't care. 
I'm writing the code. I know what the string is. This is what is representing what my, my, my constructor is. When somebody wants to see what my class is doing, they're not going to look at the CPP file. They're going to go look at the header file. And this tells tell me string is being constructed using a, a C string. So it's fine. Now what do I need to do? I need to do some string copying. So I'm going to do all the dirty stuff that is done in C behind the scene in here. Therefore, I'm going to add include uh, C string. That is essentially string.h from C language. And now I can actually use the standard input, uh, it's, uh, the, the standard uh, namespace. So I'm going to say using namespace std. So I don't have to keep uh, printing it. Now what I want to do, I want to allocate enough memory for the string that is coming. Do I need to check to see if it's null and deallocated now? No, it's the constructor. It's the moment of the object's birth. Of course it doesn't have anything in it. There is absolutely no need to do anything like that, right? So what I need to do over here is mData is set to new character. OK? Now, what do I need in here? str len of str, correct? So I get the length of the string. And I'm going to say over here plus one because I know it needs a null point, null at the end. It's a null terminated thing, correct? Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? You're good? All right. So now that I have done that, I need to put this value in what? The size of the string, where does it go? Size, correct? I have to keep that somewhere. So if that's the case, it's a good idea to have it here. So I'm going to say m size is set to. I don't want to call the function twice. So I'm going to first put it over here and then put m size over here. And now that I am done with this, what do I need to do? copy the string that is coming in into amdata. And I do, I do it with no worries because I am 100% sure that the size is perfectly adjusted to the string that is coming in. And that's going to set it to that value. Are we OK with this? Down to this point, I'm teaching nothing new. You've done this, right? Next thing, I want to be able to print this, right? I want to be able to see something. There are two ways of doing it. Either I can, either I can actually, uh, uh, either I can uh, write a display in it, or I can give access to the program to the data, but a safe one. What can I do? I can actually do this. Two things. So I can either display so O stream. Reference display. That's going to display. And of course, it's a constant because it's not going to change anything. And I'm going to make sure that I have the IO stream in here. OK? And I'm going to have the IO stream in my header file too because I have to put the prototype there. So IO stream is there. Now I'm going to get, and this actually belongs to string. So in here, I'm going to have O stream reference display. And I'm going to put a const in here. And I'm, I, think, I think I'm in clear. I am in the clear. Why is it giving me that? Display, display. We'll find out. It's mm, probably just a little behind my coding. OK, so what I need to do over here, and this O stream over here, it doesn't know what it belongs to. So I have to say STD. I cannot say using namespace up there. 
Using namespace is forbidden up there. I can't do that. All right? You cannot do using namespace over there. Remember that. All right, so that's that. So, and in display, what do I do? Now is the time for me to check to see if actually I have something over there. So if M data is not equal to null, now I'm going to say C out M data and return C out. Okay? So simple and straightforward. It prints it. Now, if I actually want to test it and see if it works or not, uh, I'm going to say uh, S, uh, and I'm going to say R, and I'm going to set R to hello there. OK? Assignment at the moment of creation is what? Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a constructor with one argument matching the what is being assigned to okay remember that i do that right from now so you remember this assignment is not an assignment operator okay now i can say s dot display and then go to new line r dot display and go to new line and hopefully it'll work so run the beautiful program of mine three years later Four years later, five years later, and the first one is a blank string with nothing in it. The second one is pointing, hello there. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So, okay. I haven't got to any case that I need to put this thing in a safe, empty state. I'm not. I could have, but I, but I haven't set it up yet. Whenever I find the need, I'm going to do it. Don't think that every object that you do, I have to put it in a safe, empty. See if the logic requires it, then do it, OK? I may have a little thing at line 12 over here. If some idiot gives me a null pointer instead of that string, I'll be in trouble. My program's going to crash. But I think let it crash. If somebody's giving me a null pointer to put it someplace, they should fix their code, okay? I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about it, okay? But again, if the prof asked or the system analyst told you, check, make sure what you're actually copying is null, then you have to have a safe empty state. For now, I'm not doing that. I don't, don't want to go into details for that. Are we okay with that or did that confuse the heck out of you? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Now, this is the tough part. Now, I'm going to do another one. I did the display, now I want to do the set. I want to actually set the string of mine to something, to a new value. I want to set my string to a new value. How do I do it? So I'm going to say, set. What do, does set return? I don't know. But I, whenever I don't know, whenever I am in I don't know mood, what happens is that I return the object itself. So my function can easily be reused for the object that is actually working in. OK? It can represent. So whenever I don't know what to return, I don't return void. I return the reference of the owner. So I'm in a string. I'm going to say string. Reference, I'm sending a reference of myself, and I'm going to call it set. And in set, I'm going to have a constant character pointer C string. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? All right. Now, let's do the set. Set is the part that I have to think. So it belongs to a string. That part's easy. And why do I have a header file that big? Let me make it smaller. We don't need that. All right. And what I'm sure about 
is that when I'm done, it's going to return a reference to the current object. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's my empty set function. Now I have to think. A constructor sets the object when? When does it set it? But when? Timely, with respect to time. When does a constructor set an object? At what time? At the moment of creation, correct? So I am sure that the pointer that is inside the object that's the moment of creation. That it's moment of creation of that pointer too. Therefore, it's pointing to nothing. But when I'm calling set, it's halfway through my program. I can simply write over here, come over here and write r dot set. Sorry. I can write r dot set. Another thing to set this to. Okay? So R was hello there beforehand. Now it's going to be another thing to set this thing to. Right? So this is the part that that thingy is going to happen. That, uh, what should I call it? That uh, uh, memory leak. So this is where I have to actually check to see if it is null or not. Now I have to say if that m data of mine is not equal to null. OK? If that data of mine is not equal to null, it means it is pointing to something. Something is in there that is pointing, correct? I don't need it anymore because I'm setting, right? So if that's the case, I have to delete it. But do I need to write the if? No. Delete already does that, right? So that's extra. It's for my, you know, uh, it's uh, kind of a thing. So I I'll tell you. So I I'll tell you why am I going to remove it. So I'm going to say m data. So what I'm saying is if it's not null, delete it. Why do I need to do that? Delete already checks for that. So I remove it. But you should have that in your brain. Know that, oops, know that delete actually does that. Delete actually checks, make sure if something is in there and then it deletes it. But of course, if it's a loose pointer, a pointer that is not initialized to null, you're in trouble. Because you are following those rules that I'm not going to leave anything null, your constructors cannot set anything uninitialized. So you're good to go. All right? So I don't need to check for anything and I literally delete the data. So the previous data is now deleted. Now I have to reset it to the new data, correct? Which the code is literally here. Correct? Right? Are we okay with this? Oh, of course, I'm going to put C's. There we go. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Now, as soon as I see repeating code, as soon as I see repeating code, I would say, yuck, I don't want to repeat the same code twice. If tomorrow I want to change the logic of these three lines, I have to go find out where they are. Don't postpone it. Immediately put it. What is this code doing, actually? This code is allocating and copying, right? So I'm going to call it just that. I'm going to go into my string.h inside the private part, because that's something that happens within the engine of my string. I don't want anybody to see it. I'm going to call that void allocate and copy. And I'm getting a constant character string here, C string here. And I'm going to actually write the code for it. Come back over here, right at the top of the place that I was using it. So I'm going to say allocate and copy. And this belongs to the string. And let's change back to this one to str so I can just copy and paste. So I'm just going to copy 
and put it right over here. And in here, I'm going to say allocate and copy. What? SDR. And in here, I'll do the exact same thing. Allocate and copy. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> so, ouch. So this is how, this is how your, your uh, code becomes self-describing, self if you can call it. I'm saying if I have a constructor, allocate and copy only. If I have a set, first delete and then allocate and copy. You follow? Now, I can actually test it and see if it's okay. So now I'm going to say r.display. Then this is one of the things that that val grind or val grind or whatever you call it is very useful. When you write something like this, if you want to see you have memory or leak or not, after you compile it on matrix, just type val grind, name of the executable, and it's going to run it and go through it, make sure you didn't do any boo-boos. It's not 100% Accurate, but for our case, 99% of the time, it catches you. So now if I actually run this, I will see that I have a hello there, and I have another thing to set this to. Now I want you to appreciate what we have created down to this point. You have never been able to, to create a string and set it to whatever you want to the exact size that you want. Anytime you wanted a name, you had to think, okay, what is the biggest size of name out there? You don't have that problem here anymore. You set it to whatever you want. It adjusts its own size to whatever you want. It's a beautiful thing. You okay with this? Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Okay, good. All right. Another thing, if I want to actually, re remember I told you I can give other functions safe access to the data of the thing. So if we want to use regular objects of C language, I would, be, I would be able to use this. What I will do is this. I can actually say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually create a, a function called C string. So, and this string, C string, returns a constant, uh, returns a constant character pointed to the data of my object. So I'm going to call this, con I'm going to say const character pointer, and then I'm going to say the name is C string, and it's a constant thing. So not only, uh, like, it's like double secure, I'll make sure that, so this First one, the return value being constant guarantees that anybody who's using any other function who's using C string cannot manipulate my data without me knowing. The second constant is for me not to shoot myself in the foot to make sure I'm not changing the code by mistake when I'm actually returning it out, like display. So now I'm going to actually copy this again and bring it back over here. So this belongs to C string, uh, belongs to string. All it does is return on data. That's it. Because I designed my object that is impossible, my M data to be null, it is impossible. If they want an empty string, I'm going to have one character. If they want 30 strings, I'm going to have 30 characters. It is impossible for my M data going through my logic to be null. Therefore, I don't need to worry about anything. If I didn't, if I had a safe empty state, then I had to actually think about something here. I cannot just return the data. If it's in the same state they said, that's null. Then and returning a null pointer is the wrong thing to do. Then I had to have another function called is empty to give them a chance to check to see if it's empty or not. I don't want to do that. Okay? Also, we always want to know, like when you are actually printing a name or something, you always want to know what is the size 
of the object, right? A size of the string, correct? And every single time you do, you have to call string length. What is string length? String is essentially a loop, right? Going through the thing, counting and returning. It's a time-consuming thing. Now I am keeping my size always updated through allocate and copy. So anytime, actually this allocate and copy, mm, I could, let me see, I want to see if I, if I can reuse my code over here too. I think I can. I know it's kind of, I can say over here, allocate and copy an empty string, right? So what happens, it's going to get the length. The length is going to be 0. 0 plus 1 will be 1, so it's going to be new character 1, and it's going to copy the empty string so everything's done. Although it's not as efficient as the other one, because it's using lots of functions and going through that, but I reuse my code. I always rather reuse my code than having uh, repeated code everywhere. So anyways, so my si my si because my size is always set to whatever I want, I can simply say int size const, again, not to shoot myself in a foot, and then I come over here and I'm going to say int string size const and return m size. I can type it. All right, there we go. So now my object actually can tell everyone what is the size of the string without going through that. So it's much faster thing than the other one because it always have the size updated over there. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to do one more thing and then we'll be done. Okay? I actually would like to do two more things. Introducing a new constructor, okay? We learned two different types of constru constructor. A constructor that had no arguments, correct? A constructor that had no arguments, and a constructor that has one or many arguments, correct? Now I'm going to introduce the second one. The second one is what we call a copy constructor. What is a copy constructor? A copy constructor is a, co is a constructor that builds your object based on an already existing object of the same type. So if I want it uh, set, so, so, I could, so I can do something like this here. So I can do something like this. String T set to R. So it accepts one argument and that argument is another object of the same type. And this is something that you have to remember until the day you die. What is it? A copy constructor signature is always the same. It cannot change. So of course it is the object itself, string, okay? Then, as an argument, it has to receive a constant, again, string, reference, okay, to be copied. It has to be a constant string reference. I'll explain to you why. If you don't put the reference over here, we're going to have the chicken and the egg scenario happening. I'll explain later on why. Okay? So it has to be that and there is no other way. How does it work? It's pretty simple actually. We, we have all the code for it. It's so simple to write it when you reuse your code. So I'm going to just bring it down here right beside the constructor that we have. Where is the constructor? We, up, up. There you go. So I'm going to just put it right over here. Where is the constructor with single value? Oh, here it is. Let me bring it up so all the constructors are together. Okay, so this one comes up. And I'm going to put the next constructor, and that constructor is going to be like this. 
string, uh, what am I doing? Yeah, string. All right. And I don't want to have to be copied, shmigly dingy. I'm just going to put over here S. Okay. And how do I do it? Allocate and copy. S dot C string. I just wrote a function that returns the C string of the object, right? Correct? I don't need to worry about it. I just reuse my code. It's got to do the allocation. It's got to do all the stuff. Everything's done. I don't need to worry about anything. Now, chicken and the egg. I'll tell you what's going on. So if, let's say, I have a function over here, <clears throat> I'm going to say int print string print string in braces. And I'm going to pass a string s in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say c out. So this function prints a string in braces. And I'm going to say s dot display. And I'm going to put another brace over here. And I'm going to go to new line. Right? Why did I make it int? I have no idea. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? And this is the last thing we are talking about. Okay? Maybe one to the last. <laughs> but So now <clears throat> let's walk through this. So this is obvious. If I actually say over here t.display, we know what happens. So I'm going to go step by step. And at the end, I'm going to say print string in braces, and I'm going to pass t to it. All right? So first, I'm going to show that actually the empty thing, we have already done that. Now let's go through it. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go step by step. OK, so let's bring this over here. And the output comes over here. Make this a little smaller like that. Bring the tester over here. Or mm, I lost my mouse keeps losing that. I think this is good enough. Yeah, so uh, we know what. So we come over here. Um, it goes all to the same. Uh, so if the first one, second one, they both go to the thing and do the allocation and copying. Uh, so let's actually do one of them. So now the, the, the empty one is happening, as you see. So it allocates and copies one. So it comes over here. String length m size becomes 0. That's size plus 1. Gets only one character, copies that one. And so m data is essentially garbage. As soon as it copies the empty string, it becomes an empty string, as you see, and it comes out. The second one is called, the second one that is R that says hello there. When we call that one, it goes with one argument, so this is actually hello there. Then it goes to allocate and copy. It does the exact same thing. It gets the length of hello thingy that is 12. Then it's going to do whatever, uh, do the uh, allocation and copying, and uh, we're going to have the exact same thing over there. Now, what happens over here will actually trigger a copy constructor. So it says, I'm building T out of R, so it jumps into the copy constructor. And in that copy constructor, it does allocate copy from the C string version of that. So it doesn't make any difference. As you see, it goes over there, returns the data of the other one that is hello there. That's the data of R. Then it goes to allocate and copy. And as you see now, str is hello there of the other object. Measures the size. New data, copies, and goes out. So the other one becomes a copy too. So display, first one is empty. Second one's going to be hello there. This is going to be another string. This is going to show the, uh, um, another string set to this one. This does the set thingy with reallocation. Does the delete first. 
Then T comes over here and displays hello there because it's set to R from the beginning. Now it's going to say print string in braces. And I want your attention over here. This is the important part. T wants to get past to this function. Let me bring it over here. So we can actually uh, put it under microscope. T is being passed to a function, right? So T is going to go into S, correct? So what's going to happen here? S is going to get initialized using a T. Therefore, copy constructor will be called of S, correct? Because S wants to get created out of T. Copy constructor is called. So this argument over here is actually T. And it copies and allocates that one. Then it goes back in here, and S becomes a copy of T. And then it prints the copy in braces. But when you look at it, what happens here now? Goes to the destructor, deletes that thing because the scope of uh, the S in here is over. Now it deletes the value for that and continues with the rest of the class, which means one by one, this structure is going to get called for M data, the one with hello there, and the next one is going to be the M data with anything set to, and the last one will be M data with nothing in it. I just deleted it so I can't see it. It was empty. Well, anyways, it deletes everything and it's gone. So that's what I was talking about when I said chicken and the egg. I'll tell you, I'll explain what does it mean. Now take a, now take a look at the, the, uh, the copy constructor. If I do not put the reference here, what's going to happen? Then to be copied object must be a copy of what is calling it, right? So your copy constructor must call the copy constructor to copy the object. That's a paradox. You cannot, call the, you cannot call the copy constructor using the copy constructor. That's not going to work out. If you remove the, the, the ampersand away, it's going to give you an error. So hey, what are you, what are you doing? It's the copy constructor. You can't do this. All right? So that's the copy constructor. And uh, I wanted to do a SDR cat for you, to concatenate for you and see how that works, but uh, do it at home. Okay? So create, create a... I'm going to write the prototype for it. So create a string reference, call it concat, and receive a constant character pointer C string. And also write a second version for it, string reference concat, and pass a constant string reference uh, uh, S to it. So it, it can concatenate one string to another. So you have fardad, solimandu, you have a fardad, you want to concatenate solimandu to the end of it. You can do it. Okay? So what you have to do, you have to measure the size, find the sum of two sizes, allocate enough memory for both, copy the old one to the new one. Well, you want me to do it? Okay, I'm going to do it. Watch the video later. This is something that's happening later, not now. So let's do the concatenation for this one. I'm going to do the concat for the first one. Um, so copy. All right. So what I need to do over here is to resize my memory. And to resize memory, you need to do this. Are you sure you don't want me to do it next day you're coming in? You want me to do it the next day coming in? And you do just a little bit of your lab today? How many people want me, to, want me to finish this with concatenation? One person. How many people want me to do the lab? Nobody? Oh, so okay. So majority says lab. So we'll do that thing later. So do it. So I'm just going to say right over here, to be implemented. So I'm going to say return this.
in here I'm going to say to, to be implemented. Now, now, but the other one is very simple. Let me just do the other one. The other one, it takes exactly two seconds to do it. So I'm going to do that. The other one is extremely simple, so I'll do the other one. It doesn't need any type of knowledge. It's just... So for this one, I'm going to say concat s dot c string. <laughs> there we go. So I'm calling the other function, <laughs> and I'm going to return it. There we go. That was easy, so I just did it. The first one is the one that is going to kind of bake your noodles. <laughs> okay. In here, I'm saying uh, use the other one. The one that I did not implement. Okay, so to be implemented. Have a beautiful day. Start your uh, lab, and I'm going to stop the recording.